So my understanding of evolution is that um, populations evolve, not individuals. So um, Richard Dawkins has a, has a nice little picture of this in, in one of his books about science, um, where he, he imagines a long picture of, of, say, rabbits. And every rabbit looks basically the same as its, as its parent um, rabbit. And you follow along the line and every one looks very similar to the one before it. But if you look, you know, say a million right. years apart, they look quite different because these yes. changes accumulate over time. But what it sounds like here is just, it, it seems to seem like there's actually quite a radical or a significant change between the yes. parents of Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve. And, so, and as you said there uh, earlier to their siblings. Yes. So is this some sort of like mega evolution or is it a, like a miraculous intervention well, I, I, I said it was, i said it may well have been miraculous yes um but you remember i talked about the two models the cultural model and the mutational model and ian tattersall of the american museum of natural history offers a mutational model of the origin of humanity where there is a dramatic uh genetic mutation in a regulatory system that has then these huge uh, results in their brain and central nervous system. So um, this could happen. Now, what's important to see, I, I think, is that there's a real fallacy in the reasoning of Dawkins here. And this is the same critique that Schaffner and Coyne also make. My model is perfectly consistent with saying that there is this long evolutionary climb toward humanity and then beyond, you know, to Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. But what I am saying is that there is a threshold which is crossed somewhere in that process. And that is because evolutionary change is not continuous. It is continual, it goes on, but it's not continuous in the sense in which a geometrical line is continuous, namely between any two points, there's always another point. So no point has an immediate successor. What's striking about evolution is that the change is discrete not continuous. That's the fallacy of the rabbit diagram. Between any two rabbits, there is not another rabbit. There are rabbits that are immediate successors of each other or predecessors, and therefore, given discrete evolutionary changes, there's no reason to think that one of these forms is the first one across the threshold, and that prior to that, it was subhuman. So I was talking to uh, Jeff Schloss, who is an evolutionary biologist, committed to the theory of evolution, uh, though a Christian. And as we spoke, he said to me, I don't see how there could not have been a first human being. At some point in the past, there were zero human beings, and then later there were some. And given that evolutionary change is discrete, he said, I, I frankly don't understand how there could not be a first human being. So I think this critique by Schaffner and Coyne is um, invalid. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, this is one where I struggle. Like, I would probably class myself as a, an an evolutionary creationist or somewhere around there and this is the struggle not just for humans but the 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 evolution of any organism you know i think is what you're kind of referring to there similar to punctuated equilibrium the idea of rapid spurts of of evolution or is it a bit what you're saying a bit different to that it doesn't need to be that i mean this is a point that uh tattersall makes in the book where i quote him he says i'm not saying that you have to be a 19th century saltationist. That is to say that evolution proceeds by fits and jumps. As long as the change is discrete, Dan, there can be someone who is the first one across that threshold that is the difference between non-human and human. 
And it could come about because of something like a regulatory mutation that produces this change. 